that's what we're looking for right there. White bass today, folks. That ain't a bad one either. There's some in here bigger. I guarantee you. Guarantee you that. Beautiful day this morning. Let's let him go. Here on the Tennessee River, right now, well, the water temperature is 46 degrees on top. It's starting to climb a little bit. And right now, I'm throwing a blade bait. That's a 3 8 of an ounce blade bait. 14 pound test red Cajun line, seven foot all-star rod, medium action, and a fast reel right here. This is a concept, concept C2. It has a seven two and one gear ratio, I believe. Let's make sure. Seven five and one, excuse me, gear ratio. I like a quick gear ratio when I'm fishing blade baits. And, uh, Let's look at the, the type of blade bait I'm, I'm throwing right now. It's very important because these fish are deep. They're anywhere from 20 to 30 feet of water right here, but they're aggressive. There's a lot of shad out here, and they're probably about this size right here. And uh, let me show you the blade bait I'm using. Okay, it's called a key burn. I couldn't remember the name of it. I've got so many different types of, of blade baits and they all work well. But this particular blade bait, when you snatch it off the bottom, what you want to do is let the bait hit the bottom. When you snatch it up off the bottom or pull it up off the bottom, it's got a real erratic drrr. Okay. Now I'm not, because of the water temperature is cold right now, because of that, I'm not coming up over three feet. Now in the summertime, I'd come up five or six feet, you know, so I don't, and a lot of times just a couple feet's all you need in the wintertime. But there's a variety of fish that I hit a blade bait. Matter of fact, a while ago I lost a big fish. I don't know what it was, <laughs> but it was a good, you know. And, and as far as species, uh, you could catch hybrid stripe, of course white bass. You can catch channel catfish, blue catfish, you can catch a flathead. Oh my goodness, the list goes on and on. A drum, a sauger, a walleye. Um, as far as bass, smallmouth, largemouth, spotted bass, about anything that'll hit a shad will hit a blade bait. And this particular blade bait, there's a lot of debris right down through here where I'm fishing, right on the edge of the river. See, that's got frog hooks on it. Very, very weedless. That's why I selected this particular blade bait uh, here in this area. Look here. I do that all day long and not get hooked. It'll come through and over cover perfectly. Let's get back in here and see what we can do. There's a lot of fish in here and we need to catch them. Now the trick to this bait is when you pick it up and let it fall back, don't follow the bait back a little quicker than what it's following. In other words, you don't want any tension. You don't want to feel that bait because what it does, it comes up and when it falls back, it falls back erratically. But if you have tension and you can feel that bait, folks, it, it'll just fall back flat like this <clears throat> without any erratic fall at all like a shad like an injured shad would fall. Okay, and that, that's very important. So it's all in timing, all in timing. Let's catch one right here. Okay, now we're in 24 feet of water. I see some shad. They're running right on the edge of this. There he is. Oh my. My, my, my. Come on in here. That's a big white bass. Arr, that's what we're looking for right there. And I caught him straight down. The good thing about these blade baits, you can vertical jig with them just like you, like you can with a spoon. And I got two or three hits right there in the 22 feet of water. 
So let's let this fish go back so we can see if there's some more. That's a nice one right there. Okay, let's put it back down there. But you don't have to jerk it. I notice a lot of people, you know, whatever you're comfortable with doing. But what I do, okay, it's on the bottom, right? <laughs> That's what there's that drop off. Right there, it's on the bottom. I pull it up, then let it fall. Pull it up and let it fall. Now, I'm, I'm following that bait a little quicker than it's falling. Like I mentioned before, you don't want to feel that bait on the fall. It don't have that erratic action. I've mentioned that two or three times because it's real important. The, the reason why is because 80% of your strikes is going to happen on the fall. There he is. There's another one. There's several in the mouth of this creek. Wow. Come on back here, boy. That's a chunk. Let's get her back down there. I can't wait to unhook him and get him get another one. That's a lot of fun. A lot of fun. Okay, get him back. Let's make a cast out there. Let's see. Yeah, 20 feet. 20 feet of water. Okay, it's on the bottom. Pick it up. Follow that bait back. 80%. I'm going to say about 80% of your strikes be on the fall. There he is. Yeah. These, these fish is moving around in here like crazy. I'll catch one in a place and then I'll have to throw somewhere else to catch another one. I hadn't really found them really grouped up. Oh my. These dudes fight, folks. This is a gamey, gamey fish. Look here. Now he just come off. But this was a requested video, so I enjoy catching white bass, especially with a, a blade bait. And I do have some jigging spoons tied on, too. Got them with me. Sometimes a jigging spoon will do better than a blade bait. But a blade bait is hard to beat. I've had people say these, I don't like them baits. They're, there's a fish. They're hard to fit. Oh, I lost him. I lost him. Let's make another cast out there. They say they're... Oh, God, I can't stand this fish. They say they're hard to fish, but they're not. Now, once you let it hit the bottom, okay, it's on the bottom, pull it up. Now, in the winter, I don't pull up too far, not over three feet. Pull it up, but follow the bait down a little quicker than it's falling. And watch that line. You'll see that line like that one. I missed him. Golly. They're hammering it, folks. I just ain't connected. Probably, they're probably small. We're pro I mean, I know we're probably going to have to move to find some good fish, but let's make another cast. There's a few out there. But follow, after you jerk it up, it's all in time. And follow the bait back down as it's falling, but don't have tension on the bait. I'll show you right here. Okay, pull it up. Follow it back. A little quicker, just a little quicker than it's falling. And you'll feel that bite. They're still hitting this blade bait. This one ain't a bad one. Ain't no giant, but he ain't a bad one. 
Come on in here. Wow. That one hit it real aggressive. I, I hadn't had but like three or four really hammered. But that one hammered that bait. All right, let me show y'all right here. See, I'm in 20 feet. I'm catching them from 20 to uh, 24 feet of water. But look at the shad right here showing up. It is full of shad right here. That little cheap hummingbird depth finder. I'm going to tell you, I'm not going to put a better one on there until it wears out. Because it don't lie, folks. When it says there's some fish down there, or shad, they are. That's what I look for, for all species. As long as you're around shad, especially on this river system, you're in good shape. I just got, just got bit right there. Come on, boy. But it seems to me like all that's in, there he is, all that's in this plate, hole here are white bass, which is okay. That's our target species. That fish is fighting, golly. That's the reason. Look here, what a big old white bass right here, golly. <laughs> wow. He was, uh, he was fighting, he was so fat, he's so fat he couldn't fight. Go on back. He couldn't move quick is what I mean. But uh, if you've never fished with a blade bait, well, get you a few. Get you a few of these if you have white bass in your river system. Because it don't matter where you're at, they'll, they'll definitely eat this bait up. And the, the, the trick for the day in these type of water temperatures is not jerking it up very far. A couple feet and then let it fall back. A couple feet. Follow the bait back. See, I got bit right there. He might come back and hit it. He might still be on its trail right there at the boat. Wow, there's a lot of them right here. Hey! I love you, baby! I could bear finger. There's one. Okay. That's probably a white bass. I don't think he's too big. We may have to go to our second, back to our second spot, folks, to catch. I don't know. He's growing up now. Uh, he's starting to fight. <laughs> Not a bad one at all. Come on back here. That's a good one. There ain't nothing wrong with that. Now, if y'all noticed, I've changed, changed up baits right here. Okay, let's let him go. To a cast master. This is a half ounce cast master made by Hack Me Tackle. I'm going to tell you what, I have caught tons of fish on this bait right here. And what I've done is took that little old cheap hook off. Y'all, excuse me, I hate to say that, but them hooks ain't no good. And replaced it with a bigger hook. This is a size, I believe this is a size four treble hook and it has some material right here on the back of this treble hook you can buy them like this they're they're pre pre-made like this i use them on spoons and blade baits but you can see let's look at that erratic, erratic action it has it slows that spoon up just a little bit and when i'm fishing this way this is a medium action falcon rod um seven foot medium action um it's perfect for this application right here this is 10 pound braid but right here i have a short leader around four foot long of 12 pound test fluorocarbon tied with a double uni knot but now this you talking about tearing some fish up now 
this is one of my favorite ways to catch them, folks. This has got to be one of my favorite ways. Favorite bait for a river when it comes to a spoon. But uh, let's see if we can catch another one or two right here. And I like that bigger hook that I put on that spoon because, as y'all know, in this cold, cold water, bass will eat spoons up. There's a fish. What do we got here? Now, that's a... What do we got? Huh. I believe... This is a... Oh, we come off. I don't know what we had. But it was a big one. Let's make another cast out there. Everything in the world will hit this spoon. It is deadly, especially when you put that bigger hook on there with that material. I forget what they call that material. But not only does it slow the fall up, it makes it look like much more natural. It looks like a wounded thread fin shad is what it looks like that's wounded or either one fluttering to the bottom that, that's dead it's really makes a big difference that bigger hook on there plus if you hook a bass you have a better chance uh, with that particular hook than using what what comes with it and all i do with it is okay let's okay it's on the bottom now just pick it up off the bottom a couple of feet and let it flutter back down that's all we're doing. And it's just like a blade bait. There's no difference, folks. They'll hit it on the fall. Most of the fish will hit it on the fall. But you don't have to jump this spoon. There's a fish. Oh, my goodness. Knocked a fire out of it. A lot of those are small is the reason why I'm missing them. But you don't have to jump that spoon off. <laughs> There's another one off the bottom very far see it's on the bottom now just about like that a couple feet and then follow it back and remember it's fluttering as it's falling we'll take a look at that flutter here in just a second there golly a lot of little ones right here one that's got some size i don't even grab it though like that one. That one got it. I knew that was a better fish. It was thump. No doubt about it. Golly. Them things fight. And just like all fish on the Tennessee River, they're, they're fat and healthy. But I hadn't really, I'm going to be honest with y'all folks, I hadn't really caught a big one, what you call a real big one yet. There's some huge ones on this river system. System, But let's look at that flutter. Okay. Let's say I jerk it up. Well, it's hard to do it like that. But come up, when I jerk it off the bottom, okay, and when it's falling back, look at that flutter. That's just like, just exactly like a wounded thread fin shad or gizzard shad. And by putting that larger hook on there with them tensils, let's just call them tensils, it makes the bait even look a little bit bigger. And I have caught some big spotted bass using this bait. Big spots. Now those are gar. There's a lot of gar in here. I hope I don't hook one of them. There's fish. That fish, by the time that spoon hit the bottom, that fish had it. A lot of fish right here. A lot of fish. Pulling, pulling. Now we're getting into a golly. Woo wee. Look here, folks. Now we're getting into a better white bass. Right here. Look at there. They 
Let's let him go. Let's see what else is out there. And I have caught some big hybrids messing around like this. Just thinking I was going to catch white bass and all of a sudden a stick of fish that, oh my goodness, started just peels lying off of you real big old hybrids will get in with these white bass a lot of times. But because the water is cold, you don't have to jerk that spoon, like snap it off of the, like that, like you would in the summertime. All you have to do is just pick it up and let it fall. You're, you're a lot better off doing that right now. Count this cold, cold water, in my opinion. Okay. Catch a, find some really big white bass. This spoon is catching outperforming the blade bait. It is today. There's one. Golly. Man, oh man, oh man. Another good one. Look at this fish pool. This is a big one. This is the kind I'm talking about right here, folks. Golly! Wow, This is the kind of white bass I'm talking about right here. Mm -hmm. Gotta be careful with them, too. That is a big Tennessee River white bass. That's what I've been looking for. This is hole number four, and we finally found some, I believe. Usually when you catch one, there's more. But, uh, yep. That Castmaster spoon is getting the job done. It always does. I've used them for years. There's something about a Castmaster spoon, uh, and it's good in salt water, too. But I want y'all to look. Let's let him go right here. That's not good. The boop. Okay. Now, a seven foot medium action rod, which I think I mentioned, is what I like to fish. Now, this particular deal right here, outfit, would work, would work good for a blade bait, too. I wouldn't have to use it on that bait caster if I didn't want to. I could use this. A lot of big gar out here, folks. So let's make another cast. But don't accept those hooks, in my opinion. Uh, after you buy a Castmaster spoon, they're great spoons. Get that little hook off of there. There's another one. Time it hit the bottom, it's just, it's thick with fish out there. Get that bigger treble hook. Because you never know when you're going to hook a big small mouth or a spotted bass if it happens. Woo wee! This is pulling. Golly. Man, oh man. Hey man. Woo. I love the fish. I love the fish. Look at the birds. There's birds! <laughs> like that right there is what I'm talking about on it. There's nothing to it. It's a blessing to be out here from the Lord. Woo! Okay. I know what y'all were thinking. Y'all thinking, God, that old guy's nuts. I have to let that adrilogen out oftentimes. If I don't, let me make another cast right here. There's one. That got it. They have you ever in your life have seen anything like this before? Whoa. I'm having a hard time. I'm trying to
that like it right there. I've settled down. Uh, God, y'all just look over me. Look at her, what a chunk. Look there. I've settled down a little bit, but still the adrenaline is pumping like y'all wouldn't believe. Let's make another cast out chunk. Folks, we had a ball today. I mean, I hadn't been fishing, let's see, about three hours, right? And I've caught so many of these things, I am give out. I found that this was the fourth place that I stopped searching for them, and I finally found a big mother load of them. There's a few big ones in there, but not a whole lot of them, but we did catch, you know, some pretty good ones for the Tennessee River. But I'm going to tell you, this is a good bait. Keyboard three eighths of an ounce. Okay, it's um, there's different colors that I use. The one, this particular color is is just called silver, and um, anything that looks like a thread fin or gizzard shad is a good selection. Um, really, and it's a two inch bait. Very very good bait. I'm gonna tell you. In fact, I'm gonna try to go fish it a little bit deeper here in a little bit and see if I can catch some different type of species other than white bass but white bass eat it up they are a little bit on the expensive side I mean I pay $12 $13 for this bait but they have the type of action that will catch a fish no doubt now as far as tackle you can use bait casting equipment if you're more comfortable with it but a medium action rod uh, like this Falcon 7 foot 10 15 pound test braid you can tie direct or you can use a leader 2000 size reel that's just about right that's just about right yeah it's just um, real sensitive you need a medium action rod on these type of baits in my opinion but we caught a lot of fish on that and a spoon so I want to say God bless each and every one of y'all. Thank y'all for all the great comments and everything y'all do for this channel. Woo. See, I'm so tore up when I catch that many fish to where my arms is aching. I get tore up. I get a drillaging. I can't help it. It's something that I cannot help. Hey, man. Woo. Remember, go fishing when you can, because it's good for you.